Gilbert Williams might be my favorite contemporary painter because of the way that he creates an idealized world where the astral mixes with gods and goddesses, as well as with fairies and nature spirits. In his own special world, the beauty and magic of nature is intensified or brought to an even higher level of perfection by the inclusion of ancient temples and monuments. From pyramids to Central Asian architecture, to ancient pagan or classical Greek temples, stressing the magical part of life, the wondrous element, all these things are different ways of showing the grand, the divine. His works have a perfect balance of the natural with the supernatural in each picture, in an aesthetically pleasing and harmonious way. Williams has always had a deep love of art history and ancient cultures. The main themes that his work centers around seem to be religion, mythology, and spirituality. In terms of inspiration, he said in an interview, the subject matter is generally an intuitive reflection of my own dream world. I usually start with a nebulous composition and then see the painting in more and more focused layers. The subjects tend to have mythic metaphysical themes, but that is not intellectually planned. William started painting at a very young age. He had a natural aptitude for it and his talent was encouraged. He said, I read art history books and tried to copy what I liked in them. As I got older, I was more interested in painting my own imaginary visions and less interested in representing objective reality. I was inspired by old artists like Bosch and 19th century illustrators who transported me into a dream world. He feels lucky to have been influenced by the psychic release and broadened cultural horizons of the 1960s, saying, I always found the 1950s rather a dull gray place. I don't have much nostalgia for those years, as many people do. When the cultural revolution of the 60s hit, it was like a psychic release. There was color and a sense of real creative magic in the air. My friends and I were always trying new creative projects and exploring different art media. He began his fine art career in the 70s as a founding member of the visionary art community. When he was asked, is there a spiritual practice you follow? Williams replied, While I have studied many traditional practices over the years, I've come to the conclusion that the universe is a lot bigger and more mysterious than humans describe in their beliefs. We are a part of the process of the universal mind becoming aware. I am at peace with the reality that it's all beyond our capacity to understand. To me, the art is a personal exploration. But I guess that's where we find some universal themes that we share in the dream world. However, I do find it very humbling and moving when people tell me that my art has been an important inspiration in some chapter of their life. Some of his works are more recognizable in terms of ancient religion and paganism. For example, this one is called Invocation and shows an ancient Greek woman invoking a deity. However, some are more abstract, portraying an idea, such as this one, which is called Visualization. Abundance is somewhat similar. An idea portrayed by a goddess. You can see what devices the artist chose to depict the nature and feeling of abundance. Her gentle arms, closed eyes, glittering blue and purple presence, which make us feel serene and at peace, and the orbs around her, making us feel that she exists in a place that naturally ripples with magic and creation. Most of them are referencing commonly known and traditional magical icons and motifs, like fairies, long-bearded wise men, sacred altars and natural places, magical castles, and so on. But some are more unconventional and unique, 
like this one, orbs. By mixing his own magical visions with actual ancient culture, you can tell that his visions are grounded in something concrete and historically developed. This painting, called A Cloud, is particularly striking as he single-handedly personifies a cloud as some sort of god or goddess in a way that has not been done before, and it's quite beautiful and thought-provoking. It gives you the feeling that, instead of the randomness of where clouds appear in the sky, over a mountain, behind it, or over a river, clouds actually are conscious, free-willing actors who choose to bless a particular place and surround it with care and love, which we wouldn't really be able to imagine ourselves if not for this art, and automatically its religious statements on the world, making that harmony and human-centered view of the universe clearer to us, thus making man feel like he's above nature through art. In many of his pictures, Williams also seems to focus on a concept, the sacred way, and you can see the natural connection of his concepts to this kind of religious sense, which is also focused on self-knowledge and deeper understanding. A part of many religions and transcendental or spiritual traditions. After all, he's showing you a path to his pure idealism and religious vision in every single one of his paintings. Some are distinctly pagan and show nature worship, such as Offer, Earthman, Spring, etc. You can feel the northern pagan religious element here, little sprites dancing, earth gods, sacred stones, such as those in ancient Celtic and Germanic religion, which still stand to this day. He uses mythology in ancient architecture. You can see famous ruins like Stonehenge, temples, Viking ships in his pictures. This one, for example, is called Camelot. Ancient myth, medieval stories, it's all being utilized for his own purposes, to place everything within a world that is his own world, which is what a true artist does. That's why art possesses genius, not for the aesthetic alone, but because the artist is basically a philosopher, a thinker, making a statement on his own interpretation of reality, or the deeper meanings behind it. He is recreating the world in his own image, creating his own universe in the same way that nature does. Nature has created her own world that we inhabit, and when man contests that world and recreates it himself, he is competing with nature and thus placing himself above her, arguing with her, by an aesthetic reorganization of the nature of things.